Coming up next on The Jeff Crilly Show, we're going to be talking to a brilliant young lady who's going to teach all of us how to reinvent ourselves and to go from victim to victor. That's just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. We're live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team and the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well all of us have been through something and especially COVID-19. I mean, think about how many people lost jobs, lost loved ones. It's been a, a, a long 12 months of a pandemic. But think about your life, you know, loss of a loved one, uh, loss, of, loss of a spouse. We all go through tragedies. And there is a secret to going out the other side and, and, and uh, having a triumph. To talk about that today, Vivian Hughes. She's an author, speaker, and coach. Brand New Me is her company. And thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Well, I love uh, your journey. I was reading about it, and uh, and I'd like you to share it with us because it, it resulted in a book that you weren't sure you wanted to publish. No, absolutely. I had written the book and sat on it for about a year because it was too transparent. I felt like there were some things that I was comfortable sharing, so the book was written from that perspective, but then it didn't feel authentic because it was too pretty. I didn't talk about some of the tragedies that happened that got me to the lowest low, which ended up giving me the opportunity to, to understand that there is a way to overcome some of these things. It's, it's just life. And to put the word just in front of it makes it sound like I'm minimizing it, but at the end of the day, there's going to be peaks and valleys. Sure. And it was a very painful divorce, and I know that there's something in the book that you weren't sure you wanted to put in there, but it, it involves you in your garage. Will you share that with the audience? Yeah, so often there, there were times when I'm at work, so I can't cry, and there's things that are happening. There's fights going on. The kids need something. I'm emotionally tore up. I have ball spots throughout my hair. My hair had fallen out, so like the size of, they don't even make half dollar coins anymore, do they? If, so half dollar size ball spots throughout my hair. Um, face was totally broken out. And it was because my marriage of over 12 years was over. So um, at work, you still have to perform. So I'm performing. I'm trying to make sure I'm dotting all the I's, crossing the T's. But then I go into the bathroom, cry for a minute, then come back out and, hey, guys, what are we doing next? What's up next? So then on the drive home, there's some more time to cry. And then in the garage before going in the house, this is when you got to get the last cry out because now you have to be mom. So the kids need you to do homework, to be to hold space for them because they have their own set of, you know, things that they need to talk about. But yeah, that crying time in the garage was a pretty big deal. And I didn't realize how many women did that until I shared and they talk about, a lot of women told me, like, yeah, the garage is the space to cry in. You told me something profound uh, before the show, and it hit me like a ton of bricks, is that women often have to schedule a time to cry. Yeah, you can't just cry when you feel like crying um, because there's other hats that you're wearing and the show must go on. You have to be all these people for everybody in your life. You have to be the mom. You have to be the daughter. Um, I even talk about that in the book where I went from being my mother's daughter to a college student, you know, to somebody's student, to somebody's wife, to somebody's mother. And at no point did I realize who I was as a woman. So like, what does Vivian want to experience as a woman? There was no time out for that. Wow. Yeah. And so you had the courage to share these very personal stories in a book. We'll put it on the screen. It's all about me, The Modern Woman's Guide to Thriving After Divorce. So let's talk about, you, you've you talked about the valley. Yeah. What were some of the things that you learned along the way that you want to share with other people who are going through adversity, regardless of what, the, what, what that is? Oh, I love that question. Um, the biggest thing for me was deciding to 
no longer identify with an archetype. So for me to be a villain in my marriage or divorce, then that means, or for me to be, to be the victim, that means my ex had to be the villain. Um, and there's also a hero. And I didn't want to be a victim because to me, if you're wearing victim, that means I'm a victim at work. I'm a victim as a mom. I'm a victim as a friend. And a victim will be treated like a victim. So um, I wanted to figure out a way to shed victimhood. And one of the best ways to do that was to no longer need anybody to be a villain. How about I take culpability for everything that I've experienced up to this point? And instead of saying nobody told me or nobody taught me, how about I just say, what do I wanna do now? Like, cause people always say 20 years ago, if I would have known then what I know now, well, no, let's go 20 years forward. What is it that I wanna do? What do I wanna experience? Who do I wanna be? Who do I wanna show up as? If I only have 12 months to live, what is it that I want to experience? And it wasn't being somebody's ex-wife who did everything right and why did he do this? That was, I didn't want to like beat that drum anymore. Yeah, you know what I love about it is that I think if you read this book and you had a loss of a job or a loss of a loved one and you just put it through a different filter, the, every lesson that you learned applies to their life too, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I have, I've had several men read it and they're telling me this book is not for women, this book is for anybody who ever experienced a major transition and had to pull themselves back up again, um, yeah. Now, you also do workshops. I love it that you're sharing your wisdom with the world. We're going to put up on the screen uh, one of the workshops that I guess that you do, Mindfulness and Well-Being for Teams and Organizations. And I love it that you offer it to companies these days because I think a lot of bosses out there watching this right now are dealing with this on the front line. Maybe they had a rock star salesperson and all of a sudden that salesperson is home on a Zoom call and they get their energy from being around people at the office and all of a sudden they're rock star is uh, flailing. Uh, so you can help a company through those kinds of transitions. Absolutely, absolutely. Because people, if you're a peak performer, that's who you are, that's what you do. But sometimes we need a little bit of attunement and we get off of our square because we're human. So we're always gonna fall short every now and then. You just need to reframe some things. And I help people figure out a way to tap back, align with their why, really get back into why you wanna do this, what's the big deal, why is it so important to you? Um, and sometimes it's meditation involved, sometimes it's some sound healing, sometimes it's some rage, some screaming, some, it's, it's about allowing the energy to move. Mm. I've taken some clients to a dance class with me just because they needed to get the emotions to move out of their bodies. Some need to go sit by some water. So there's. It's not a one size fits all. I love it. What you've identified is that there's always going to be a period of grieving. You have to have that period of grieving. Yeah. In fact, if you shove it down, it, it erupts later. And, and sometimes it's, that's not pleasant to, to see either. But I, we all know people who uh, have been a victim and something happened 20 years ago and they're still a victim. And, and, and it's important to reframe, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's all about the person deciding, it's a choice. It's this, what happened, happened. We can't change that, it's not gonna go away, but there's still breath. So you still have an opportunity to reframe exactly what it is that you want to have happen. Did I wanna have a divorce? No. Did I wanna lose my job? Did I wanna move to doubt? Like all of these things, no, but life happens. Mm. And what are we gonna do to get to the other side? There's so many different things that we can do. Let's talk about the importance of surrounding yourself with uh, people who are going to lift you up because we all know people and sometimes they're relatives yeah. that, you know, we love mom and dad, but maybe they're saying things that are, hurt us or set us yeah. back. Talk about the importance of surrounding yourself with, with people who are, are giving you uh, good medicine. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest things is remembering that you can't tell everybody everything. So instead of trying to default to the same people to tell the same stories to, um, stop. Like, instead of just wanting to be heard, want improvement, want to evolve. And I prayed for angels. I prayed for people to come into my life who could move me from where I am to where I want to be. So be that um, somebody at work, a mentor, a coach, it, a friend, a passer -buyer. I wanted even the stranger who I passed by, if we had some type of interaction, it could turn into something else. But telling your same story to the same people, is, it's gonna yield the same results. And they're, they're not any better than you are. So why keep talking to people who can't really 
take you where you want to go. So if they haven't accomplished what you want to accomplish or haven't already overcome it, they may not be the best person to have that conversation with. Vivian, I can talk to you all day. Unfortunately, we only have about a minute left. So I know that there are people out here watching this saying she is talking to me right now. So I want you to look into the camera on the right and talk to the viewer who is going through something right now and they've just been there too long. Yeah. I would offer the perspective of changing the narrative. Um, you get to decide what happens in your life. It's a one man show, one person show. So everybody else is a co-star in your life, just like you are a co-star in everybody else's life. So nobody's doing anything to you. They're living their life and you just happen to be a casualty. So to take yourself out of that, just I would suggest take a deep breath, go, in, go inward and discover what is it that I want to experience? What type of life do I want to live? Independent of all these other people, what is it that I want to do? And then when you can go into the I and then go into your heart space, we talked about that. When you go into your heart space, all the real answers come up for you. But take time to let everybody else off the hook and just go within to discover what's next for me. Wow, Vivian, I just got chills. I, I could listen to you all day. We're going to put her website up so people can get in touch. It's brandnewme.live. Uh, and uh, Vivian, thank you so much for sharing your heart and your wisdom with the world. Thank you for having me here. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.